Hey, we are live. Brent Hagen, this is doc Q and A with Dr. A. Let me get into the camera here a little bit. Um, so, hey, this is a really exciting uh, Q and A because we got a couple professional athletes. I wish I could say that I could join their ranks as a professional athlete, but I didn't make it that far. I did play uh, soccer in college, uh, but I did not make it. So we have Rodney Bailey here. Uh, he's a 42-year-old former NFL player. Uh, he won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. Ohio State grad and uh, played uh, several years in the uh, NFL, but has been retired for now 14 years. Yes, right? sir. And um, he has such an amazing story. You can see, uh, obviously, his physique. Um, and we have, uh, and this has been a great story, and that's why we're so excited to have Rodney here. We have Brandon Wagner here, uh, got drafted by the Yankees at 19, uh, and is just coming out of playing baseball. And so he has another good uh, perspective as far as a uh, professional athlete. And just two months ago, has kind of decided to step away from baseball, uh, maybe permanently, maybe not. But uh, the big thing is, is that he has some other valuable information that, as we talk about lifestyles and the importance of everything we're doing and how we are at the point where we're at. And so it's great because you have a 27-year-old, you have a 42-year-old, and you have a 51-year-old. Um, all talking about our journeys in, in, you know, we all played sports in college and, in, 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 you know, obviously some in the professional level. But the, the important part about this is that, you know, we as athletes learn a lot about lifestyle at an early age. But you also have to understand as athletes, even in the top 1% of, of athletes to go into play sports in college, and then obviously less than that to go and play uh, professional sports just how important lifestyles are to us and you, this is where it gets really important because you, you know as professional athletes they have the same physiology they have the same things that they have to go against so when they leave their sport imagine they're left trying to figure out how they can get healthier and so this is this is something that that is very important to to hear from these guys on the on their journeys um so i'm going to ask some questions so you guys can kind of see how these guys have have really learned a lot from myself and from uh, and, and a lot of the products and, and, and uh, protocols that we have at Telewellness MD to really manage lifestyle and get people feeling the best they can. And so, you, you know, one of the things we talk is Rodney. You know, Rodney here, you know, at one point, um, you had to gain weight for your sport, right? right. Can you explain that a little bit? When I came into uh, the NFL when I was a rookie with the Pittsburgh Steelers, I was told to gain 26 pounds to have an opportunity to make the team, and I mean, I was around 280 pounds at the time, but that was to be a part of the workload, being a defensive lineman in a 3-4 defense where you're playing a lot of different gaps. They wanted you to be able to handle that workload. I was 21 years old, so that started off my life of being over 300 pounds for a long time. And what was your top weight? My top weight was 482 pounds from what I saw when I was on the scale. <laughs> and 482 uh, pounds, and what do you weigh now? I weigh 274 pounds. And when did the right. bulk of your weight start coming off? The what bulk. year did you start to really get onto this health journey? I would have to say it just picked up speed probably in the last two to three years. After 2018, when I went to the hospital for a sleep apnea issue and exercise-induced asthma, I had to eat the hospital food for five days. I had to go through that whole thing. It was one of those enough is enough moments, and I learned to start intermittent fasting. And I would have to say to answer that question, probably the last two and a half years we've mm -hmm. seen. And I mean, the physique that people get a chance to see or looking at, I mean, this is the last five miles of a long trip this has been of losing weight. And it's been amazing, but it's been just the intermittent fasting, drinking tons of water, and regulating sleep. Perfect. And Brandon, you had the same issues where you, at some point, were encouraged to gain weight as well, right? And uh, Yeah, so there was a point with the Yankees that, you know, they at one point it was like, hey, we want you to put on, a, you know, 10 pounds. And at the time, it, you know, it was easy. I was young. and But it wasn't a true 10 pounds of, of good muscle. It was, you know, whatever I can find, I'm stuffing it in my face. And it's, you know, like Ronnie said, it's affecting my sleep which is ultimately affecting my on-field performance. And it's, you know, we come in a business of performance-based, what have you done for me lately? And I guess looking back on it, knowing that what I know now with the previous five weeks, I think could have a lot of advantage for young athletes or even high school, high school athletes. 
Yeah, and so so what they're saying is that you know when they're when you're looking at what they're they're told or asked to do in their business, and also realizing that professional sports is a business. They have the same stress as we do as as far as performing. Actually, more stress because that is their lifestyle. That is their I mean that is their livelihood. And so, so you, you know, now when, when you're just like for Brandon, just seeing Brandon come out of baseball a couple months ago and seeing, you know, how he looked and, and, and where he kind of wanted to get to when he talked to me, he was like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm stepping away for a little bit. I might go play again. I might not, but what can I do to start shaping my body back up? I want to have the most energy I can have. I just need to feel better. And just in five weeks, he's already by jumping on our, our carb rev program, uh, improving his sleep cycles, uh, drinking 128 ounces of water a day. How much has that impacted you already? Uh, the energy is through the roof. Um, the the best thing that I notice is I'm sleeping through the night yeah. consistently. And I'm like eight plus hours of sleep every night. And when I put my head on the pillow, I go straight to sleep. I think for me, that's the, the biggest takeaway. And then that leads to an early morning yeah. and you get a jump start on everything else. So you're able to, like my routine is I wake up, you know, I try to do a little bit of a workout in the morning before I head in and then do weights at night. So with getting, you know, going to bed like 9.30, 10 o'clock and waking up at seven, I'm able to get, you know, eight plus hours of sleep through consistent sleep and then wake up, get a good workout in and start the day right. No, what about with you and sleep? I know when you came, you know, obviously with the weight you had and, uh, you know, and, and, and Rodney's another thing, another story is that, you know, when you come out and you come out of football and you're 487 pounds at your max, uh, battling weight at 450 and realizing, you know, all of a sudden a light bulb goes off and you're like, shit, I want to live. And so Rodney for a while, he was not just battling um, depression in, in uh, you know, it was also substance use, um, you know, chronic pain, uh, chronic uh, uh, brain injuries. And so, you know, for him to get him to be able to conceive uh, that what his body can do in allowing science to take over and, and um, you know, for you, it was it was a little bit of work to get you that motivation and, and, and belief that you can turn this whole lifestyle around to to get to a point where mentally and physically you feel as good as you do. Absolutely, it was um, really you do the um, the dance all the time of you know I was a young man trying to figure out how the rest of your life's supposed to go. You play the game, now the game's over, and now you're trying to figure out if you are um, what are you? You know what did it mean? What did all that mean? Um, you're trying to navigate life in your 30s and your late 20s that that lifestyle wouldn't have fit for right now. Being the size I was, also uh, beating yourself down for losses, beating yourself down for not having a career anymore, the divorce, uh, a lot of different things. You go from triumph as a young age at the peak um, of your performing, winning lots of games, championships, always in this winner circle, to now you're dealing with tragedies and triumphs and friends who you who you didn't know were going through certain things and you're back now dealing with these things and it really came to a, a situation where I had to um, really really stop lying I had to really be honest I had to you know how hard it is for a person 450 pounds to try to convince people you're 330 <laughs> I mean it's just silly lies like that that are eating you up because it's eating you up that this is this is what this has become. And it was sitting with you, meeting you, talking to you, and your optimism. And it really gave me an opportunity to think we have a chance. We really do. Yeah. So you so so looking at where someone has come from, remember four hundred and fifty pounds. And so this isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. This is something that, that Rodney set uh, you know his sights on and then you know, talking a little bit, I mentioned last uh, last Q and A. We talked a little bit about results, and and not, and we're all our own biggest critics. And we were talking before we went live about body dysmorphism, and in in realizing that, you know, you 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 can't beat yourself up, and instead, if you let if you let science guide you, your body naturally goes to the to the weight that it's supposed to if you're doing the right things. 
and again it's not you don't have to be perfect this is this is a lifestyle remember we we socialize we still go out we still do things we still have fun we'll talk a little bit about behaviors uh, before we go but overall this is a lifestyle so you this is something that's gradually going to to happen if you're putting the work in and you get used to doing things in moderation that means yes you got to sleep you have to keep working on your sleep cycle to make it the best you can Yes, you got to get an eating strategy. We, you're going to hear us talking about the carb rev and intermittent fasting because that is a sustainable eating strategy that has science supported. And then we're going to talk about exercise. You know, the, the, these guys don't look the way they do without exercise. And you're also seeing three different sports. You got football, the biggest guy. You got baseball, the second biggest guy. And then you got me, the endurance guy, playing soccer, running seven miles, eight miles a game. And so you can see the different bodies, but yet. It still comes down to muscle to body fat ratios, and so you know we can you, you can almost see that we're all different uh, body uh, body habituses and, and body types, but yet we all have the same goals. We all have the same science in place, and you can see it's working, and it comes over time. Um, you, you know, with Brandon, he, you know his was just he had some loose body fat. He needed to tone up. He wanted to get rid of some body fat, put on some lean muscle mass. We just changed, got him on the carb rev. You know, immediately he's increasing his protein intake. He's dropping his his uh, processed f- foods, improving his sleep cycle. He's concentrating in the gym with more protein, and instantly. I mean, it was less than five weeks, and he's already his body's changing. And so, those are the little the little changes that starts to fuel you into just continuing to do it over and over again because it's it's a lifestyle. And so, you know, when, we, when you look at our three bodies and you realize, okay, well, there's science. In, in, so that's the part that I told you last Q&A also, is that we all have a similar blueprint. Our bodies don't defy physics. You know, it, it, we all have to have a certain amount of sleep. We have to exercise. We have to drink water. And we have to um, eat specific foods most of the time. But then what kind of circles back is our habits. And so, you know, all three of us, you know, are going to have to somewhat be somewhat similar on our habits too or it doesn't work so if you have the science down then it becomes what are your habits what are you doing on your free time what are you doing that could be hurting your body uh you know we were just talking a little bit about cannabis just because uh in in the in the two different leagues you find in football you weren't allowed to have cannabis so a lot of nfl players drank alcohol in baseball there was no rules on cannabis so the baseball players were allowed to use cannabis uh, or alcohol, so you could kind of choose which one you wanted to do. But these things do affect your lifestyle, and so you know, talk a little bit about how how much um, you guys feel that the habits um, are kind of swept under the rug as long as you guys are performing as a business. You know, so they don't really tell you guys you can't drink or as long as you pass your test, right? Yeah, if you, you know if you're performing well, it's you know slap on the butt, everything's good. But it, that is, it is definitely a, a problem for the future for the athlete because there's many times, I'm sure, I mean, Ronnie's got the same story. There's many times it's just you have way too much to drink and you have to wake up early and then you go half ass practice. And the next thing you know, you see your buddy, you know, that you're out last night with pull a hamstring and he's out six to eight weeks. You know, that's the stuff we don't think about when we're young because we think we're invisible. And then as time comes on, you start to realize, you know, you're out of the game or whatever, and that's gone, and just it keeps adding up. And the next thing you know, it's you look in the mirror, and it's just like, Rodney can explain me, it better, have, but like I said, look, and just like, oh, man. Being on a lot of winning teams, man, from, through the time of, from Ohio State all the way through the pros, there were lots of times to celebrate. But I just, re- I was just really evaluated this. There were lots of times to celebrate, but you were always moving. So if it was after a big win, you probably weren't in the bar as long as I ended up being in the bar in my retirement, or in my early part of retirement. I was sitting on a bar stool at times in retirement for six to eight hours. You have, you, you have control over your time now. When you were playing the game and you were working from uh, day to day, your adrenal glands were bringing you in every single day. You got to show up every day, like you said, for walkthrough. You got to show up to do meetings you got to show up to do charity work you got to show up all these times when you're playing when you're not playing now you have all this time to sit back figure out how to do things and it just came to a head where for me to live for me to live for my family for me to do what i need to do to become the father i needed to become i had to create the lifestyle with medicine 
Yeah, and, and, and here's another point is that, you know, just like any life, we all have work and we all have business and we have stress. And just like for these guys, um, self-medicating is a very common problem uh, in America. And it's because we have stressful life. I mean, especially after these last few years, a lot of people have had stress. Alcohol sales went up staggering numbers during this time. And, uh, you, you know, so these guys are having the same thing. I mean, they have the stress of, am I going to be on a team next year? Am I going to get a contract? Am I going to, you know, how is my plane going? And when you, when, you, when you still have access to alcohol and there's no rules on your habits, um, you know, you can see that these guys would be drawn to the same stressors that everyone else has. And I'll imagine the same thing. I mean, these guys are athletes their whole lives. That's all they've done is play sports. And here they are. And it, it just imagine if all you were, not all you were, but it's just imagine if your job was one thing. And a lot of businesses, you're either in marketing, you're, in a, you're an electrician, you're a, a plumber, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're, a, um, you're a, a, a bus driver. You do one thing, and when that ends, you basically are like, okay, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a, a personal trainer, and I'm not a sleep specialist, and you're not a lifestyle specialist. You, th these guys are going through the same trials and tribulations that you guys are, that I you know, have sat and put my whole career for, is to figure out how we can age the best we can and prevent disease. And so think of these guys, there's so many athletes out there that leave their sport and they're stuck going, okay, well, how do I get healthy? And if you're not led down the right path, you're, these guys are gonna be in the same spot. I mean, if you guys don't know professional athletes, they, they're in the same situation. There are a lot of professional athletes that finish their sport and they're stuck not feeling the best they can, but not knowing how to get out of it. You can go to your traditional doctor and they're going to say, hey, you know, everything looks great. Sorry that you're tired or we have a medicine for that, but they're not going to push lifestyle. I'm going to say something. Yeah. One thing, two, we're always injured. Athletes are always injured. You're always maintaining some injury that you're trying to fix. So you're either, that's where the medication and the um, self-medication comes in and the there's something going on. In the last three years ago, I tore my right Achilles. I've torn both my Achilles. I've torn both my rotator cuffs. I mean, there's a lot of things you're still dealing with when you have weight to lose or to gain. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And that's an, another thing that we talk about is that as we age, you have to change your exercise routines. You have to start preserving your health. And so, you know, one of the things that, that Brandon and, and, and uh, uh, Rodney had touched on was just, you, you know, how they feel. So, like, now just looking in five weeks, you said you're already sleeping better, you can see your body's changing, you're, you're back out of trying to be a professional baseball player, instead you're trying to be the best Brandon you can be, your best Rodney you can be. Now how does that tie into just overall mental and physical energy and just happiness um, as far as once you start getting your bodies to, to, to respond and getting the results of, of you know having a lifestyle that is really you know resulting in, in energy, happiness, physique. I mean, do you feel amazing in five weeks? I, yeah, this is probably the best I've ever felt. And I think um, two, two and a half months ago when I stopped playing, I didn't know what I was going to be doing or, or whatever. And I found out quickly that my health was the most important to me. Bam. And then it gave me, you know, the health will, will lead to whatever, the wealth, you yep. know? So I really started to concentrate on that. I was like, if I want to do anything, I need to make sure I'm as healthy as I can possibly be. And bam, the past five weeks have, have yeah. been a success. And we know Rodney, I mean, Rodney's, uh, you know, went to the point where, you know, he, he would wake up days and not even know if he wanted to exist. How good are you feeling? feeling unbelievable six years ago as when, when we first met I mean it was cluster headaches um, migraines that would put me down I was denying those I didn't want to talk to people about it um, tinnitus in the ears um, so that's what was motivating a lot of the late nights and drinking of course not dealing with the sleep apnea um, not getting REM sleep till I was 39 years old with a, with the proper sleep machine that I was not being able to sleep, and that was slowing my metabolism, helping me gain weight. And the way I feel today, can't even believe I can say 274 pounds. 
of twisted steel and sex appeal. <laughs> like, no, like, no, no, the thing, it really, to, to be able to have um, learned um, intermittent fasting has been humbling. It has saved me lots of money. Um, uh, you know, it has, I'm saying personally, I can even say this three or four months ago, uh, I'd saved $800 in one month just for me, how I used to eat personally. It's a lot of food. From, <laughs> just from intermittent fasting, drinking 128 ounces of water daily. And instead of booze, instead of booze at all. I mean, like you said, every so often, if you're at an event, maybe you have one, but I mean, you're not doing what, what the damage you were doing before. And that happens from when you come from pr professional athlete as a young age and you start growing and you don't stop. And that wasn't my thing was I didn't recognize the warning signs or the places to stop. So you're in great hands with us. Yeah. So, so the, the, the real take home message from this is that is how good they feel. And you, you hear them both. The, the main thing, you look at Brandon, he just came out of uh, playing baseball. His big thing he did, the carb rev. And the, 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 so you can see that this isn't, this isn't like magic pills that we're throwing out there. This is understanding that there is science and your lifestyle has to guide you through this whole thing. And if you just, if you just surrender yourself, to do things different. If you're sitting there and you're like looking in the mirror or you look at yourself and just say, I just don't feel well. Or are you saying, I don't look the way I want? That is fine. We all were there. We've all been there. We've all gone through different shapes as we've gone through our careers. I got done with soccer in college. I went up to my peak at 205. Um, you know, now I'm down to 185. Our bodies change. But you know, what you want to get to, I didn't have a steady lifestyle at some points in my when I was in medical school and residency and I'm running around all the place all over the place but once you figure out and you can put it all together which is really what we've tried to do is to give you guys package solutions to allow you to have something that you can grab onto put it into practice and over time you'll get results you don't need results immediately you look at Rodney's story I mean he's a this is like this is exactly the epitome of what people can do you can, you're capable of anything, but you have to remember your time is so important. So every day that you do not say, I'm going to do something different. If you're doing the same thing every day, getting up, doing it over and over again, that is the definition of insanity. So if you want something different, if you want to look different, if you want to feel different, you have to do something different. So we're just showing you science, and that's what I wanted these guys to come and saying that it doesn't matter, you could be the top athlete in the world, you still are following science and you are doing things that you have to do to get those results and so if you put some of these things into practice you're Rodney it's, it gets inexpensive at the beginning you might have to invest in yourself and you will get every penny times 10 out of that if you invest in yourself but as you go through it sleep diet and exercise are free you know once you have everything down it's free yeah you might still have to take some supplements and yeah you might have to do some things just to keep maintenance but this is basically a decision to, in, to change your lifestyle and start thinking out of the box because you know we start talking about habits everybody thinks that you, you know just because alcohol is free it doesn't mean it is good you're starting to see a lot of people rebel against alcohol and just starting to say just because it's out there doesn't mean you have to consume it I like to use the soda theory I don't know if I coined it but I haven't heard anyone else say it but you know with my kids I you know we didn't have soda in the house uh, if we did, we kept it away. They weren't allowed to have it. The only times that we let our kids have soda, when we went on vacation, when we went to parties, or they had uh, you know friends over to the house, then that was a reason to. If you approach your alcohol that way, you're going to have life-changing events. If you're drinking every day, if you're drinking too much, you have to be an architect of your habits or you will be victims of them. Do you understand that? You'll be an architect of your habits, which means you're in control and you're, you, 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 they're, they're in moderation, or you will be a victim of them. That means it is going to interfere with the exact goal you're trying to get to. Both of these guys will attest to that cutting out the amount of alcohol they were consuming was a big part to getting their sleep better, to getting their weight off, to getting their muscle mass that they want, uh, mentally to feel better. And so just remember that you do not have to follow what you think or what has been kind of uh, uh, you know, pushed into your, into your brain that is this is, what, this is how lifestyles have to be. So uh, you know, just you have to start exploring and start thinking a little bit out of the box. Um, but I, I'm hoping that you guys have really uh, understood uh, or understand 
you know, the situation that we all are in, I hope these guys have given you, shed a little bit of light on the fact that they're saying, hey, look, everybody's got to work hard. So if you work hard on yourself, the one person you can control is yourself. That is it. Every time you walk out, everybody is looking at you and you're a walking example of how well you care about yourself and how much you care about uh, um, your, your future. Remember, we want you to be healthy. It's health span, not lifespan. So just real quick, uh, what, any last words, suggestions to people about what you've learned in these few weeks of, of wellness? It's, uh, it's consistent. So, you know, I don't steer off from sets or reps either in, in the way I work out. I make sure that I, I hold myself accountable with sleep, and even eating. And, and, you know, five weeks ago I came in and, and, and Doc was like, make sure you get 200 grams of carbs. I did see him without a shirt on too. Yeah, I, there is a difference between five weeks ago and now. But it was 200 grams of carbs and 200 grams of protein. So I've been making sure I've, I'm hammering that home you know, for the past five weeks. And it's the first time I've actually dedicated serious time and effort for this type of, you know, yeah. for getting your life first place. Yeah. And, and is it becoming easy? It's way easier. Yeah. First, I mean, for the intermittent fasting, Ronnie showed me, you know, the app, how to use it. He can go over it more, but that helped big time when to eat, tracking calories, everything. And is you are is it not easy now? It is easy now. The Do you hear that? The, the last. I'm telling you, once you get to the other side, it is the easiest thing to maintain. I use the Body Fast app. Seventy three weeks on Fat Killer is what I've been using. I showed Brandon how to use Body it Fast. B o d y f a s t. You can get it on. It's a it's a great intermittent fasting app. It goes really well with the carb revs, so. Helps with all the notifications it gives you, letting you know when you need to drink water every couple hours. Also, it's fun, it's interactive. I'm a nerd from the Ohio State University who graduated in three and a half years. So all of the tr trophies that I keep winning for losing weight and fasting for 50 weeks and all this, it, it excites me. It gets, <laughs> it's a little thing, gets but it going. gets me going. And for anybody who is looking to get better, Telewellness MD, Dr. Egan, has changed my life. It has made me a better researcher, a better father, a better husband. It's made me want to show up and show out every time I go somewhere. And it's something that I was, and I had to find it. And this has been the program that has done it. Getting a chance to work with wonderful young athletes who keep finding more to themselves. We, we all talk and we always talk about what that winning edge is. And Dr. Egan, we appreciate everything you've done. Yes, absolutely. And so, did you guys hear what Rodney just said? He said, you know, so you got to think about that. It doesn't matter how low of a spot you feel you're at right now. It doesn't matter. That's already passed. It changes. The, the second you make a decision to change, you will get change. Every little change you make makes you feel lighter and makes you, you know, continue to just grow off of those good decisions. And as you start getting used to making good decisions for yourself, it hits every aspect of your life. Because remember, wellness, the, the whole idea of wellness is lifestyle. It, that is it. It's about, about relationships, experiences, uh, preventing disease, of course, staying out of the hospital. So all of this hard work is, is for you. You, you. This is your project. So, you know, don't feel that there's any weight. 487 pounds now to 274. And counting. We're still so, so, pounds, right? Right. So, so just understand, <laughs> he has a six-pack now. I mean, and, and, and so, so just, you guys, but it, it's just understanding that anything can happen if you set your mind to it, and it's not a race. Just get it going. The life is about, the, the life is about the, 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 the whole, the whole, the whole climb, and, and so just, if you just realize that you are capable, find a starting point. We have all the solutions. We try to make it inexpensive for you guys to, to get access to these. We have great medical support, um, but I'm just happy to have these guys. We're going to have them on more. We're going to have other athletes that we're working with that are going to come on, because I think it's important. Because everyone thinks that the athletes, you know, they get, you know, they get the golden spoon you know, or the silver spoon where they just, they they have the best of everything. No, they they work hard just like everyone else, and they have the the, the they they struggle with depression. They struggle with substance abuse. They struggle with um, not understanding what to do. You know, especially when they start hitting the end of their career. So we're it's it's we're all the same. It's just you know what athletes I think just have it. Uh, 
a little bit more entrenched in their work ethic uh, just to keep going. And so that is a lot of times what, what stops people from being successful is that they just look in the mirror and they look, I can't do this. Well, this is proof. You can do it. You can defy age and you can look and feel the best you can. You just got to put a little bit of work in getting it going. And then once you're over the hump, it's the easiest thing in the world, isn't it? It becomes so easy. And you and, and, and the greatest thing is that you are your biggest project. So um, so there it is. So hopefully you guys can take a little bit out of this. Uh, check out our different products and protocols. You have to just focus on your lifestyle. Focus hard on it. And then uh, in, the, in the long run, you guys are going to see just how inexpensive and easy it is. So thank you. We'll have these guys back again. Um, please fire any questions you have for us, and we'll see you next time.